Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of The Garden Life, because it is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And I think we will all agree that there is much to be thankful for, and, and much that those of us who are very fortunate can do for others who may not have as much to be grateful for. But today I wanna to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. One of my tables is set and I'm just gonna go right now, Stuart, with my question of the day. Do you guys, I think I asked, this is kind of a traditional question of the day. I think I ask it every year. Do you set your Thanksgiving table early? If you are the turkey house for your family and friends, do you set your table early so you can enjoy it for more than just the big day? Well, I. I do, and I'm going to share with you one of my tables uh, completely themed with Tom Turkey at the head of the table. Then I'm going to show you a little bit more of my bathroom and some more styling that I have done around that fabulous gallery wall that we hung the other day. Um, Stuart actually took some footage of the gentleman who hung it for me, and we are going to share that footage with you so that you might get some tips on how to hang a perfect gallery wall. Then we're going going to go into the bowels of my basement and start excavating some of the stuff that I will be bringing up to get ready for the Christmas home tour on, on December 2nd and December 3rd. Um, we might share a couple of recipes with you that I'm going to be making in the coming week. Uh, Stuart, that's a lot to cover. What do you say? Let's get started. Let's do it. be good if I did a follow-up on the installation of the gallery wall in the master or the primary bath and kind of clarify a few things. A lot of you asked how was it hung so that the grid is so perfect? Well, as it turns out, Tim at Frame Masters, the guy who hangs things for me that I, I, I just really want to be perfect, he allowed us to film him doing it, or at least uh, shared some tips with us on how to get a really good symmetrical grid, and also a few tips on how we decided about placement because the grid is offset slightly too to the left for reasons that were really just personal to me. Um, I have to tell you, it's a cloudy day, it's been raining, and I think the vibe that we've got here is absolutely brilliant, if I do say so <laughs> myself. Leah, what do you think? So some of you were confused when I said, I described this as kind of a public bathroom because it's off of the primary bedroom and they thought, well, how could that be? <laughs> well, um, I lead kind of a public life and, and this house is on lots of tours. It's obviously on camera. So it's kind of a public space, but also because the bathroom is so large and you don't get to see the whole thing right now because there is, <laughs> there's organization in process on the other side of the bathroom. Um, but this bathroom is large enough, and I thought about this as soon as I saw this bathroom in the cottage. First of all, this space was made out of a porch, and that's why it is just so spacious and so roomy. And I remember thinking, wow, not only will it be luxurious to bathe in here, to candlelight no less, but also if I wanted to have a girl party over here and I wanted to entertain the girlfriends, Leah's nodding her head. <laughs> um, if I wanted to have somebody in here to give manicures, I could have music playing in here. I could serve champagne cocktails off of the table um, because it's roomy enough for a small gathering that then could spill over into the bedroom if I so choose. And I thought, how fun would that be? Um, or maybe even as a gift to one of my daughter-in-laws, if I made arrangements for someone to give them a massage, we set up a massage table here, they could get a manicure, they could take a bubble bath and it would really be pretty special for them. And it would make them feel because I think 
take this space, you guys tell me if I'm right, it has kind of a hotel vibe, doesn't it? You could put a sign at the door and it would feel like a spa. Yeah, kind of a, kind of a spa <laughs> vibe. Okay, so now a little bit more about the aesthetics. So I decided to go with this color of the month and I'm thrilled with it. I, and I think the whole thing kind of came together for me when I, I, and it validated my decision because I switched the bedding out in my bedroom to winter bedding. So it's a lot more burgundy. Um, it's, uh, it's just a lot more rich and I really like it. We'll show you that in a moment. Um, but the, these colors really pick up on the tones that are in the bedroom. Now, I loved how exacting you guys were in your deconstruction of this whole space. Because when I said maybe in this chair, I wanted to have a pillow or some sort with some fabric that I might find in Santa Fe. And you said, oh no, Linda, because this doesn't look like it's got a, a Southwestern vibe. It looks like it's got a tropical vibe. And very much it does. And that helped me kind of pull it all together in a way that is very reminiscent to me of Singapore. Now that said, I could still get some kind of fabulous fabric in Santa Fe because the tones are very prevalent in a lot of the, a lot of the things that they have there. But I have then accented the rest of this space and styled the table with that same Merlot, uh, what were we calling it, Leah? Burgundy, whatever this, this color of the month is. <laughs> All I know is it is rich and it is beautiful. And I love these color echoes that repeat from the candles to the tropical touch of an orchid to the artwork itself. And then to just some other notes that I, um, that made me think about to that. And I stole this from actually a resort, a spa. This is a eucalyptus branch that I have stuck in this canister, these, this canister that was thrifted. Both of these were thrifted and I've put those wonderful Dr. Teal's bath salts in there. I love them with a little scoop so I can use those. I also, this is a, this would be a great idea if you are budget challenged for the holidays and you want to come up with some great gift ideas, then repurpose some of your most beautiful wine bottles and decant. It looks really nice. It looks it nice, nice, doesn't, doesn't it? Um, decant some of that Dr. Teal's bath foam into the bottles themselves. I've had these bottles for a while. I saved them for just this purpose. And I also saved these corks. I was about to say, those, those aren't the original tops. Are these they? aren't the original tops, but don't they look great? Looks because really they kind of give this teak, again, kind of that, that British colonial Singapore vibe that I like. Now, Stuart, you are going to love this. See this loofah sponge right here? Mm -hmm. Guess where I got that? The ocean. No. <laughs> Lufa actually is a gourd that is grown oh. and dried. Really? And Natalie Kent gave that to me oh, for cool. Christmas. Gave these to me for Christmas. She gave me several. And she no grew idea. and dried. Talk about living a garden-inspired life. She, she, grew these? she grew these and yeah, then dried them. Cool. <laughs> I, I know. It, it really is amazing. Look here. Just well, in case you don't believe me. Thing, yeah. She does. Organic loofah really cool. well that she grew herself. Good so job. I love that. Now, here is another idea that I have an inspiration pick for. And we, I should show the inspiration image right here, Stuart. And by the way, you get lots of comments where pe people will laugh and they'll say, oh, I love it when Linda says, Stuart, show a picture right here. And then you don't show it because I forget to give it to them. Um, if you haven't already figured it out, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, <laughs> this, is, this channel isn't about perfection. Um, practically everything is behind the scenes. <laughs> we, we show you the uglies. We show you how the sausage is being made. So pretty much everything is behind the scenes. But I will, Stuart, I will be emphatic about you inserting an image right here of a picture <laughs> that I saw that inspired this wonderful idea. Now, honestly, I have had these glass canisters forever. 
I can't remember if they were thrifted, if some kind of food item came in them or what, but, I, but I've but i had them forever. And I have long since, ever since I saw that image, thought it would be so cool to wrap some leather strapping around it, particularly around oh, this groove, bevel right, right yeah. here, around the bevel. And then what I did on this one, because I was still thinking through the process, is all I did was just kind of tuck it into that groove, cut it off about right here, and then I stapled it. And then I think probably what I'll do, and it would be fine like this, I could just torque it so you wouldn't see the staple, but I think what I'm gonna do is get some leather thread and some wood buttons, and I'm going to secure it in that way, do that to three of them, but you could easily, you guys, you could easily find glass vases or glass canisters like this for nothing at the thrift store. We literally you, see them everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. You can get some of this, um, I guess it's just leather strapping. I bought it online and you can make these yourself. You know what? I think this would be a great gift idea for the man in your life. Get some of these, put some leather strapping around it. You might even be able to get something that could do an embossed initial in this. And then you could fill it with razors, with, um, oh, just all of the different things that men might need that they, <laughs> or you might, they could even put this on their dresser for keys, for change, for the, you know, the pocket items, pocket items. But I think it could look really cool, maybe all gathered together in a single basket. But I think that would be a great gift idea and cost practically nothing. And then if you coupled it with some of your wine bottles filled with the Dr. Teal's stuff, I think that would be a, that would be a great idea. And then because it's all kind of about um, Singapore and this giving me Singapore vibes, where my son Johnny is, he gave this little icon, this little statue to us many years ago. It's one of our favorite things, and I think it perfectly reflects the vibe that we got when we were in not only Singapore, but even more in Bali. So I think I, I mentioned this was kind of left side oriented. Have you mentioned that the glass is the non the Oh, uh, no, but thank you for bringing that up. So many of you were concerned that these gorgeous photographs would get damaged by humidity in the bathroom or um, just by exposure. But that's why I bit the bullet and I <laughs> bought the special museum quality glass. No reflection. That there's no reflection off of. And I love it because this does get bright sunlight and I knew that would bother me. It will also protect them. And also this is a large bathroom with a large opening and I've got a fan. So humidity when you take a shower really isn't a problem. And we just don't take showers that are quite that long. So I don't think that's gonna, that's gonna be a problem. So, but a great point. I'm so glad many of you commented on that because it is a consideration if you're hanging really any kind of artwork in your bathroom. Well, I knew that with this gap over here, I was going to want something that gave me some height and would kind of ground the corner. So different things came to mind. I thought, well, I could put a plant stand there with a big cascading fern or a great big tropical plant. And I might still do that when I switch out the color palette in the spring from this gorgeous Merlot color to maybe a springier chartreuse when I can kind of switch out the accessories. But for now, I wanted something where I could hang my towels because you may notice in this bathroom that near near the shower itself and kind of near the bathtub I am wall space limited I'm wall space challenged to really have any kind of towel racks or towel hooks where you can just kind of reach out and grab well I thought maybe maybe one of um, kind of the 
I don't know that they're coat racks. Are they towel racks you sometimes see in the better hotel rooms? Um, and I thought maybe something like that would work in here as a towel rack. So I scoured, I looked at I don't know how many different standing coat racks until I found one that I thought kind of had a quality that looked like teak slash bamboo that had an expanse that was wide enough for me to hang towels, but that also I could use if I wanted to hang a bathrobe or a wet towel or something like that, I can easily do that. And there's also a space at the bottom for a basket and I could hang baskets and things on there. So that gives me well, you need room for all your baskets. And so I need room for all of my baskets, which, ha which handle other luxuries. Um, sometimes I, not sometimes, a lot of times, I read in the bathtub, as does my son Johnny. So the books that I am reading right now that I want to read in the bathtub, I can keep in that basket. I can hang my, my, uh, my jammies or my robe here. I can hang my wet towel. I've got a place to sit right here to put on my lotion after I immediately get out of the tub or the shower. It's one of these inexpensive rattan chairs that I love so much. Lee, I think I lent this to you for a little while. Um, because they fold and I just bought four more of them so that I can use them for Thanksgiving and additional seating both in here if I have said champagne spa party and also that I can use outside that way it is they are multi-purpose and they can look good aesthetically in any space where I choose to use them so is there anything I've forgotten to share any other questions oh yes there is another question and a big thank you to you guys I talked about painting this black and then a number of you recommended, well, why don't I paint it in that same very, very dark green that reads black that I painted all of the pieces, the wicker pieces that I inherited from my second mom that I have in my office. And I found the can of paint. And I think that that's what I am gonna do. I think I will probably use as more of a rub rather than solid, but more of a rub of that really, really dark tropical green on the wicker table. Thank you guys for the ideas. That's why I love for you guys to comment. So please comment what you think about how we have styled this space. I promise you the other portions of the bathroom will be cleaned up soon. And what do you say, Stuart? We take a break here and let's go down to the basement. So Tim works with Frame Masters in Edmond, mm -hmm. and you have helped me hang I don't know how many things right. around this house. My friend Deborah gave me your name, and a, a project like this that's a little bit more complex that I really want to make sure I have perfect placement and perfect symmetry and perfect distance between each print. That's when you call in the that's when you call in the big guns like Tim. Would you mind describing just a little bit about how we came to this conclusion of, of where we decided to hang them and what your methodology was? Well, with your direction on putting them in the space or where you wanted them and how far you want them apart, then we just start doing the math, make sure all of our hangers are uh, matched and doing all the math uh, to get that spacing and to get it in the position you want. And here's a great, here's a great tip that, that Tim helped me get clarity on, and that was I wanted them, as I spoke earlier, I wanted them kind of oriented a little bit more to the south or to the left. And so then it was to what degree did we want to do that? And, and this table is going to be here. So he said, well, why don't we just place the table and then he will center the prints above the location of the table, which is very obvious, but isn't necessarily intuitive to somebody like me. So we are getting ready to hang the very last print. And doesn't it look amazing? And then he's checking for the level on everything. And there we have it. Easy peasy for somebody else, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, you may not know it, but this is the third time I've tried to say Thanksgiving. So, when you were growing up, like me, did you watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Most of the time. Yeah. And who came at the end? Well, I don't remember. Santa. Oh yeah. Santa <laughs> comes. At, smiling. Yeah, so Santa <laughs> comes at the very end. So I'd always, you know, you'd always watch and, until the very end. You have to make it through the joy and 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 the celebration that is Thanksgiving before Santa comes. Mm -hmm. So along those same lines, we'll have a surprise for you at the end of this video. Right next door is the surprise. But in the meantime, we created a really special quiz for you guys to take. And it's just a fun little quiz to tell you what your Christmas holiday decor style is. So there's a link below, you can click that and go take that quiz, but be sure to come back to this video to see what is hiding behind, behind this door. Behind this door, yes. Well, I think it's time that I go down to the basement and I start excavating the Christmas decorations that I had from the other house from last year. I got rid of a lot of them. I'm not sure what I still have and what I want to play with. But before we head down there, I want to show you that I indeed did tidy up my pantry and oh, made my curious. list. This is a big reveal. That's a big this is a, yeah, this is a big reveal. All right, so you're coming to do mine next, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's a Christmas gift for you. Maybe you get maybe you get a coupon. A coupon for Christmas. Do you know how long it took me to get my own bed? Okay, so what do you say we go to the basement? Well, a lot of you have asked, do I have a basement? Yes, I do have a basement, and this is where I store lots of things. Now typically, um, in my defense, typically it's pretty tidy down here, but I have unearthed all of my Christmas ornaments, my Christmas boxes, and you may recall, Stuart, that it was at this time last year that we bought the cottage. <laughs> No, yeah, we haven't had a, like, yeah. a real Christmas here. We haven't had a real Christmas here, but we were moving at Christmas time and in January. And so a lot of the things that I was packing were already out and they were just getting kind of, oh, I wasn't as methodical about putting away my Christmas decorations as I typically, <laughs> oh, wow. as I typically am. Which you're now experiencing the aftermath. Which now, yes, and which now I'm, I'm suffering the consequences <laughs> of that. So here's just a glimpse of some of the things I am ready to oh, de-box, remember those? I've got an idea for those, I think, um, that I bought at a thrift store. And um, what do I, I've got different things. Oh, look at my pine cone stash. My pine cone and mag magnolia seed head stash. I've got that. And what was especially important to me was that I locate all of the wreaths that I hang outside the windows on the cottage. Oh, yeah. And I found those in a big box that What's was the, the number of those that you have? Uh, I've, lot, got five, right? I've got five of them, and okay. I'm not really sure how, how we're going to formulaically do that on the outside, um, what, but we're thinking about it. More windows now. Because I've got floor. more windows yeah, on the, more yeah, now, more yeah. now. I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute. Well, not now. necessarily more, but more on the first floor. Yes. yes okay, okay, so I'm, I'll, I'll be thinking <laughs> through that. I've got more pine cones over there. Um, there's a little Christmas tree. I've got stockings, but I'm going to bring some of these things upstairs to Santa's workshop. But I have to I show you, I, <laughs> I have to show you. Okay, this is always my favorite, my favorite. I showed you, if you've watched my channel, you have seen this box many times before. This is the sweetest thing ever. So my son, Jamie, we, I call him Jamer, which he probably hates, but this is a box that contains a Christmas wreath that he made for me in maybe in kindergarten. And I have since embellished it with all, with all kind of kitchen items. But what I want to show you is look at how sweetly he decorated the box with a little snowman and the candy canes. It's just so, it's just so retro. Oh, no, that's just the, yeah, it, oh, it, Santa hat. That's Santa it. hat. It's just, oh, look, over here. Look. Gifts. So, oh, 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 when he have pe oh, peace on earth. Happy holidays. Okay, he did this. Looks like maybe, was he in fifth grade in 2003? Um... I, I just think it is absolutely the dearest, dearest thing 
and I get great joy. Never underestimate the value of some of your child uh, gifts that you get from your children. Some are more special than others. This one, and you know what I love about this, Stuart? And I'm not going to go down memory line too much. But what I love about this is it just looks so retro and it and it just looks so much like a 1930s kind of house right, that you would find this in. We could print boxes like this. And sell I know we could print boxes. boxes. I just I absolutely love that. Maybe <laughs> I need to make a Christmas card out of that. Oh, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. I could. OK, we can talk about this afterwards. OK, OK. See, we're just we're just <laughs> idea machines. And then another thing that I always like to do, I had these from last year, is I like to have to go hot chocolate cups. Oh yeah, I'm this. Yeah, for the guys that work out in the garden, or um, or just visit, sometimes Stuart. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Stuart, sometimes Leah, sometimes whoever is here. And I like to have to go Christmas things with hot chocolate, with that favorite hot chocolate mix um, that I told you about. And I have another one I'm going to try too. So um, that's just a little glimpse into the deep dark recesses of the basement. Um, more to come. I'm going to schlep some of this stuff upstairs to Santa's workshop. And then, um, but after that, it's this on the holidays until Thanksgiving's over. Gobble, gobble, you guys. Well, this is table number one of two tables that will relate to one another, but be slightly different. So I wanted to give you a glimpse of what it will look like, oh, pretty much when it's complete. Now on this lit fad table, this will seat six. And I have used some of these rattan or seagrass chargers underneath the plates. And you can see here that I've got one plate, so you can see that these are the plates I'm going to be using. But when they actually, when the tables are actually set, none of the plates will be on the tables. Those will be up there on the buffet where they can serve themselves. And right now, this might look a little bit congested, but remember, these are their napkins. So by the time they take this off, put it on their lap, put their plate in place, they will have more than enough room for their beverage and for their probably overflowing Thanksgiving plate. Now, how did I decide to do this? Well, I wanted to keep it rustic. I wanted to keep it simple. Last year was all about elegance. And by the way, stay tuned tomorrow. We're going to put up that slideshow of Thanksgiving pasts with different tablescapes. But I told you about these. They, I, I got these online. I absolutely love them. They're tea towels that I am using as napkins. And increasingly, I find that I like the scale of this better than just traditional napkin size. I love the colors of these. And I love just how rich they feel. They almost, um, I don't know, they feel like something you might have, have picked up overseas. They're beautiful, I think. So I folded them just so in a square so that Mr. Tom will show prominently. So you can see there that I've just kind of formed it into a triangle with Tom Turkey right there. And then I have these galvanized napkin rings. I've had these four years. And I'll try to put a link to something similar. And then I've just got my turkey feathers that I ordered, very inexpensive. And then some beautiful October glory leaves that I've collected from the neighborhood. They're starting to dry, but it's in my color of the month and I love it. And then these will be on the second table that will run down the center of the room. I will have a tablecloth that's probably about this color. And then on the main table, the larger table, this is where these little Tom turkeys will sit. And I will put little tea lights in these. I've also thought I could use it for, you could use them for little salt and pepper canisters, each individually at each place, but I don't have enough of them. And I thought that might 
make the table look a little bit too cluttered. So I'll have these and I might just gift them to some of the people who attend as just a little favor. And then later this week, I'm going to bake my my turkey cookies now actually they are maple leaf cookies it's a recipe an old martha stewart recipe i don't even know if you can find it anymore that i've modified some i make turkeys out of them instead of maple leaves and later after we get some of those baked i will show them to you and then those will probably be in a large basket or something where everyone can take them home as just a little gift in case they don't get enough sweets and enough calories from the pumpkin pie, the pecan pie, the apple pie, and all of the savory things on the table. So I, I think it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of rustic and festive. I will have other kinds of centerpieces that will be in different places in the cottage because you guys know I'm all about a fabulous centerpiece. And the centerpiece for this Thanksgiving will be located probably on the sideboard in the parlor. Every year, my friends Jenny and Steve have something made for me based on the color palette I give them and the container that I also give them for them to fill at a date with Iris. And every year, it's just so fun. They deliver it the Wednesday before, and it's such a fun treat for me. And then in addition, I typically always have my own flowers too. So this is kind of how how, how Turkey Tom is rocking and rolling at the cottage this year. And of course, as there are more updates before the big day, I'll be sharing those with you as well. But I love the fact that it is rustic, but with just still a touch of elegance. I love my flatware. This is Oneida. I have had it for years, and I love the fact that then I can go in either, I can go in either metallic direction. I can go either in brass, or also I can kind of go in a silver direction. And I love the way these Reed and Barton candlesticks uh -huh. that are brass pick up that little bit of brass in the flatware. And as I said, by the time they remove the napkins and everything, there'll be more than enough more than enough room for them to relocate here in the banquette. But will it probably be the smaller people that that eat here? Yes, it probably will. And you'll notice that I've moved out the mom chair at the end and I've replaced it with this smaller chair that takes up a little bit less room. But you know, when you look at, at, at spreads of Thanksgiving um, over the years, because we're accommodating and we want to accommodate extra people, extra friends, and any family member who might um, not have another place to go, then we always have to kind of be a little bit scrunched up to allow for everyone, because after all, isn't that what Thanksgiving's all about? Well, one of the very few memories I have from when I was very, very small, even before my mother died, was that at Christmas time, the basement would be sheeted off. There would be a sheet <laughs> covering <laughs> the opening to the basement. At least that's how it was in my imagination, because that's where Santa's workshop was. So and, cool. <laughs> and you weren't allowed to even get anywhere near it. So I'm kind of picking up on that theme here because I don't like to mix my holidays. I don't like to mix my Christmas and Thanksgiving, but since I'm on a Christmas tour, Santa has to have her workshop and I've got to have a place where I can start playing with some ideas and store my mess before it all gets straightened out. So here's just a little glimpse of some of the stuff that I brought up from the basement. Okay, no more peeking, Stuart, no more peeking. Well, we have a very special outfit of the day for you, but first, give thanks. <laughs> and I give thanks to being able to work with Leah and Stuart. And Stuart said, I've seen these before, and it's because I've had these for years. I love them. And typically, these go on a long table that I have outside, weather permitting, where we've got all of the drinks and everything set up. Cute. So, it, yeah, it's kind of fun. And yes, they are, um, they are very traditional at my house, and I think they're cute. 
And you know, you guys could probably, some of you that are crafty could probably make this. Yeah. I couldn't begin to tell you where I got this many, many years ago. Okay, so that's the first part of our outfit. Give thanks. The second part of our outfit, or do you want to go first? Why don't you go first? Well, our sweater should go first because we both went to Target. We both went to Target. Separately and bought sweaters without knowing the other one did, which is so And they're the same brand. thing, only mine is a long sleeve mm -hmm. sweater and hers is a mock neck. Mine's yeah. a, this is a crew neck and mm -hmm. yours is a mock turtleneck sleeveless yes and these are so They're comfy so they are so comfy you guys because i think a foreshadowing for the coming months i'm going to be wearing lots of tone on tone gray mm -hmm. okay so tell me about your ensemble okay well i haven't bought a, bought clothes at target in a long time i haven't but either this has been on my pinterest board of things i'm looking for and thrifting for for months and when I saw this at Target, I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it because I think I'll wear it a lot. I saw I have a Pinterest photo of a girl wearing like a collared shirt underneath a sweater vest like this. So I got it for that. Okay, so that's a that's a tip, you guys, to keep ideas for outfits. Yeah. Not only a mood board. A mood board, not only for clothes that you want to acquire or or put on your gift list mm -hmm. for the holidays, but also ways to rethink and rework things you've already got in your wardrobe. Yes, true. Yeah, so that's from Target. These pants I've had for a long time. They're from a brand called LF Markey, which is a British brand, I think. These boots I've probably worn in an outfit of the day before <laughs> I've been wearing them every day, which they were, uh, I got them at Marshall's. They're coach boots, which is amazing. And my best friend was with me and I wasn't sure about getting them. And she said, you will wear those every day this fall and winter. And I have literally worn them almost every, almost single every day. day. And they're kind of, it's so, kind of a cost per wear yes, thing. I've got some chunky, <laughs> yeah, I got some chunky, chunky black boots that I like to wear too. And your chapeau. Yes. So I just got my hair cut um, recently. And it looks so cute, Thank a you. French bob. A little French bob. But now, bob. did you read their article that uh, Italian bobs are now? No, what's kind an of a Italian thing? bob? It's a little bit longer and wavier, but cute. excuse Love me it. for interrupting, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Bob. It, it, yes, it it's will. heading that way. Um, and will. I went to Target looking for a beret and I didn't find, I couldn't find them. And then I got to Linda's house this morning and she had a beret from Target. And I was like, where were those? That I just bought. I teased Leah and I said, from now on when we shop, I need to buy one for myself and yes. one for Leah because Same. our tastes are so similar. so similar. Our styling is different, but our tastes are very, very similar. She looks a lot cuter in that Stop. beret than I'm, I probably... I'm borrowing it today and I'll probably go buy one and, later. Because it's so cute. I think it was... Eleven dollars yeah. or something. Yeah, and it's ninety percent wool. Stuart noticed. He looked in the. Hey, oh, we love. So okay, it's really nice. So it was interesting to me. I had not been to Target in. Uh, I can't remember the last time mm -hmm. I went to Target because yeah. we go to more thrift, thrift stores and I do buy a lot of things online, especially this year because mm -hmm. I've been trying to get the cottage ready. So it was it was interesting and I found some, some good things. To me, it's one of those things I don't do real often. Um, some people buy their groceries there and things, but for, for me, it's a little bit more of a drive. But nevertheless, I, there were some things I needed for the holidays and some, some Christmas gift ideas. Yep. So, so in, in the spirit of one for you, one for me, then I bought myself <laughs> this, this gray sweater because Love I'm it. doing lots of gray tone on tone stuff. And I feel a little bit like I am channeling all of Catherine Hepburn, Diane Keaton, Meg, Meg Ryan. Ryan, Meg Ryan, those old movies with my kind of oversized, yes. high-waisted corduroy trousers. Yep. Is it kind of Annie Hall? A little mm -hmm. bit of Annie Hall, maybe. Yeah. Um, when Harry Met Sally, that they wore when the Harry sweaters. Met Sally. Yeah, you know the when sweater I vibes. when I watched that movie or that documentary on Ralph Lauren mm -hmm. that I was telling you about, he he styled and I think did the costume design for Annie Hall. Oh. So you can kind of real you can really see some, yep. some connections there. And, and then these pants. these pants I I got online and they're yes they may not be figure flattering but they are so comfortable. Oversized and, pants are in. Yeah, right oversized now. pants are in, and I especially like them when you can kind of roll them up with mm -hmm. boots. And then, um, truth be told, we've had on our house slippers until now when That's we. True. <laughs> When, when we put on our boots, and for me, these are Ugg boots, 
Oh my gosh, they're the, the most comfortable boots I have. They look they're Ugg boots. These did not come from Target. Um, but Your watch I, band. And my, my watch band came, yeah, this was online. And oh, most importantly, mm -hmm. most importantly, a shout out. And always tops on our Christmas gift list. Atrio tiles, mm -hmm. these gorgeous earrings. I almost wore mine today. Did you? I, I, I just forgot yeah. to put them in. They're they're beautiful. Stuart, how many pair have you bought for your loved ones? Two or three. Two or three. I absolutely love love these and love her mm -hmm. and her creativity. And they're really really special. And they they just. Well, they look far more expensive than they are, I so think. Um, what else have we forgotten? I think that pretty much covers it. But if you are out and you want some ideas for how you could maybe style. I might wear this to family Thanksgiving, so. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. She does, okay, she doesn't even have to think about it. Yeah. And it's always good to not have to think, to have something mm -hmm. planned ahead before the frenzy of the holidays kicks in. You guys have a good one.